What's your favorite part of the brain? Well, the hippocampus has gotten a lot of attention lately, and you've probably heard of it, so let's learn a little bit about it in this video. The hippocampus is located on the interior, the inside of the temporal lobe, so it's not visible from the exterior surface of the brain. It's in what we call the medial, the middle of the temporal lobe. It's part of a system called the limbic system, many different brain parts that work together uh, in the lower inner part of the brain. It is difficult to show the exact location of the hippocampus on a 2D screen uh, because it's on the inside of the temporal lobe and you can't see it on the surface of the brain. But here's an illustration, I'll show you some more. And here's another illustration that shows the location of the hippocampus on the inside of the temporal lobe. And here again, another illustration that shows location of the hippocampus. And as you'll see from this illustration, we really have two hippocampi, one on the left, one on the right. And here's another indication uh, of the location of the left and right hippocampi in the medial temporal lobe. Here we have a front view and a side view showing the location of the hippocampi. How did the hippocampus get its name? Well, early brain scientists didn't know the functions of different parts of the brain, so they named quite often parts of the brain based on their shape. As you see here, the human hippocampus on the left has a shape that looks very much like the animal called a seahorse. And so the word hippocampus really means seahorse. It comes from the Greek word hippos, meaning horse, and campos, meaning a sea monster. So your hippocampus is a horse sea monster. And this illustration shows the relationship of the hippocampus to some other brain parts, uh, including the thalamus, which is a relay center in the middle of the brain. The relay sends sensory information from one place to another, and the hippocampi kind of surround the thalamus. Psychological scientists have discovered the hippocampus is extremely important for learning and memory. I like to call it the librarian in the brain. It takes incoming information and holds onto it for a little while and then sorts it out into different parts of the brain where it gets stored, a process we call consolidation, and then later can retrieve the information. So it's a little bit like the librarian who knows how to find a book and knows where to put it back. Here are some cartoons about the hippocampus. On the left, the seahorse, the hippocampus, is not exactly a librarian, looks more like a hotel clerk, but notice the cortex. That's the upper cerebral part of the brain that does the thinking. And so the hippocampus has really a lot of connections with the cortex uh, and helps store memories there. And then on the right, we have this joke, hippocamping. Hi a hippopotamus has gone camping. Well. I like to say it's easier to remember hippocampus as if we focus on the word campus because a college campus, for example, is a place where we do learning and memory. And this helps us remember the function of the hippocampus is not camping skills, but learning and memory skills. In order to do its job uh, as librarian of the brain, the hippocampus has to have lots of connections with other brain areas. And here we see a little map of the connections of the hippocampus to various brain areas. So lots of uh, information is flowing in and out of the hippocampus. Here's an illustration that shows the neural activity going on uh, in and around the hippocampus. Notice that the brain cells are sort of organized uh, in layers and they uh, take information and sort it and create uh, networks that act like uh, computer software for storing information. 
So hippocampus will take some information, hold on to it for a while, and then distribute what we call consolidate it into different brain areas. So when thinking about the hippocampus, think of the word campus. The hippocampus, as I'm showing the part of the brain here, is critical for acquiring, storing, and retrieving what we call declarative memories. This means just regular memories that you have in your mind that people call memories. Uh, if you have damage in your hippocampus, you're going to have trouble uh, creating and storing new memories. This is called anterograde amnesia. So when you have damage in the hippocampus, which can be caused by disease or drugs like marijuana or brain tumors or strokes, uh, this this kind of damage in the hippocampus causes what we call anterograde amnesia. A person has trouble making new memories. The most famous person who, who had anterograde amnesia was a man named Henry Molison. Uh, we always knew him as H.M. until he died some years ago, and then we knew his real name. But in the literature, he's always known as H.M., his initials. When he was a young man, he had his hippocampus, his both his hippocampi removed, to treat his severe epilepsy, and he became the most studied patient in the history of psychology. He was first studied by Brenda Milner, and her research changed our whole ideas about memory. She discovered that there's more than one kind of memory, that in fact, HM could remember some things, but not in his conscious mind. So the hippocampus is required for conscious memories we call declarative memories. And here's an illustration on the left of a normal brain showing the hippocampus. And then on the right, HM's brain, he had large sections of his medial temporal lobe removed in order to treat his epilepsy. And in fact, it worked. His seizures were reduced tremendously, but now he had anterograde amnesia. The first person who studied H.M. Henry Molison was psychologist Brenda Milner, who was from Canada and taught at McGill University. In fact, she still is teaching and studying psychology at age 102 and still going strong. Let's hope we can all be like her. She has won many, many awards for her studies of neuropsychology, sometimes called the founder of neuropsychology. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit about the hippocampus and maybe it's now your favorite part of the brain. Uh, be sure to check out my other uh, videos on my channel, Brucey, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm psychology professor Bruce Heinrichs. Bye for now.